God honors those who honor him. 1 Samuel 2.30 Here is today's devotion. Today's abridged scripture reading begins in verse 1 of Mark chapter 15. Early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders and scribes and the whole council immediately held a consultation, and binding Jesus, they led him away and delivered him to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, It is as you say. The chief priests began to accuse him harshly. Then Pilate questioned him again, saying, Do you not answer? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further answer, so Pilate was amazed. We encourage you to read the entire 15th chapter of Mark to see the harsh treatment Jesus endured for you and me. We will abbreviate it here, verse 12. Pilate said to the religious leaders, Then what shall I do with him, whom you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! And after having Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers dressed him up in purple, and after twisting a crown of thorns, they put it on him, and they began to acclaim him, Hail, king of the Jews! They kept beating his head with a reed, and spitting on him, and kneeling and bowing before him. Then they brought him to the place Golgotha, which is translated, Place of a Skull. They tried to give him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it, and they crucified him. Those passing by were hurling abuse at him. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes, were mocking him among themselves and saying, he saved others, he cannot save himself. Those who were crucified with him were also insulting him. When the sixth hour came, darkness fell over the whole land until the ninth hour. At the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a reed, and gave him a drink, saying, Let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion, who was standing right in front of him, saw the way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was of God. With hundreds of Old Testament prophecies related to the expected Messiah, it shouldn't surprise us that God used many people, believers, unbelievers, and even some unquestionably wicked individuals to ensure that the Savior's earthly life would unfold according to God's perfect plan. For example, Caesar Augustus ordered a census that brought Joseph and Mary to Bethlehem, the city of Christ's birth. What's more, God used some of the most powerful men of the day to bring about His Son's sacrificial death on the cross. Trumped-up charges by the Pharisees and Sadducees helped turn the crowd against Jesus. Pilate condemned Him, and the Romans carried out the actual crucifixion. They even bartered for His clothes and chose not to break His legs, as predicted in Scripture. During the dark days between Jesus Christ's crucifixion and resurrection, the disciples must have believed the messianic plan had been derailed. But God's goal wasn't to bring political revolution, as some believed. He sent His Son to offer redemption to mankind. Jesus paid the penalty of death in our place for all our sin. Before the foundation of the world, God had planned for the salvation of people from every tribe and nation. Throughout history, he orchestrated events to fulfill his purpose, using even the ungodly to move his plan forward. Many have had a hand in advancing the Savior's story, but the ultimate responsibility is the Heavenly Father's. He gave his only Son over to death on behalf of the world that he loved. Both the righteous and the wicked 
who took part in God's story were following his script. You are listening to Second Chance Ministry Radio.